Stay tuned. I used to hate those words. Before the time of, uh, of catch-up TV and, and, uh, and Netflix and Stan and those kinds of things, believe it or not, young people, if you got caught up in a TV show, you had to wait till next week to find out what happened. And the writers of, this, of these shows were very clever because what they would do is they would end with a cliffhanger. In the, in the process of the TV show, they would, they would entice you, they would draw you in, they'd get you to the edge of your seat and then all of a sudden it would say, stay tuned, you know, to be continued. And then you'd get to next week's show within the first five minutes, last week's problems were fixed, everything was resolved, and then you were on to this week's problems and the whole thing would start all over again. But what about one of the great things about living in, in today's age is that you know, we've got catch-up TV, Netflix, uh, Stan, Disney+, Plus, Binge. So you can watch an entire TV series and not have to have that feeling of impatient waiting. We still kind of have to experience that when it comes to, uh, to movies. Nicole and I, we are big... Um, fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so all of those uh, superhero movies. Um, and the reason we love them is because they've got a bit of everything. They've got action, humor, uh, romance, mystery. They've got these, these really big character arch, arcs, huge character development that all kind of culminates and climaxes in this one big epic cinematic experience. The way that these Marvel movies usually work is that um, each individual superhero will have uh, their own movie or, or a series of movies to help you to get to really know the character, to, to see what motivates them, to see how they develop. And then eventually the world or the universe will face a, a villain that is just too big or too strong for any one superhero to take on alone. And they all need to band together and work together to defeat them. Now, they've, they've reproduced this formula a number of times. It happened in uh, Avengers, in um, Avengers Age of Ultron. But in the last one, they did something that was very unfair to, to Marvel fans because they broke it up into two parts. Uh, the first part was called in Avengers Infinity War. Um, and in that movie, um, all of our superheroes that we've come to know and love over the last 10 years all had to come together to face this, this big supervillain called Thanos. And Thanos' vision was to basically destroy half of life in the universe. He saw that, that, that all of this life that was, take, that was in the universe was sucking the life and the resource out of the universe. And so we see at the end of the movie, all he had to do was snap his fingers and half of the life in the universe was gone. And that's when it came up, stay tuned, to be continued, something big is coming. So we had to spend a whole year not knowing what was going to happen, not knowing who was still alive, not knowing um, how they were going to fix it or even if they could fix it. And so for that whole year, I'm on the internet looking at hints and spoilers just to kind of catch a glimpse of what was going to happen next. We had to endure this great impatient waiting. Today is the, the first Sunday of the Advent season, which is a season of, of waiting, of anticipation, of expectation. We, we affiliate ourselves with the Jews at the time who were waiting and longing for their Messiah, for their Saviour, for their King to come. Just like we, we long for and need forgiveness, need a saviour, need a new start. But over the last couple of weeks, what we've been reminded of is that we too are in this period of waiting and longing as we wait for the sequel, as we wait for Jesus' return, when he will come and make all things new and make all things right. We are living in this period of impatient waiting. We're entering into a season with an all too familiar story. It's kind of like 
uh, our favorite movie that we have binge watched over and over and over again. We know when our favorite line is coming up. We cringe at knowing what's going to happen next. We begin to tear up when we know we're, we're coming to that part of the story that, that really pulls on our heartstrings. But if, the, if this story of Christmas, if the story of the birth of Christ is like a, a familiar movie, then the passage from today kind of plays out like a, like a trailer, a movie trailer. You can kind of imagine the voiceover setting the scene. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and heavenly bodies will be shaken. The camera then, then pans over to, the, to an image of a fig tree that is starting to sprout new leaves and starting to sprout new life. And the voiceover continues, as soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. You start to get this feeling that something big is coming up. And the trailer finishes by saying, but about the day or the hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the sun, but only the father. Be on guard, be alert, watch. This trailer shapes this all too familiar story of, of cute sheep, of angels in the fields, of, of wise men bringing gifts to a blue-eyed, blonde-haired, rosy-cheeked child, which just doesn't make sense because you're in the middle of Jerusalem. It, it, it shapes this, this all too familiar story with kind of a, a suspenseful, action-filled, ominous kind of tone. The Christmas story read in this way is very different from the G-rated version that we read our kids, the, the version of the story that, that we read to Nora. And if we read it in this way, how does it affect us as we approach the Advent season, this season uh, of anticipation and of waiting and of expectation? Are we, are we merely waiting for a baby to be born? Or is there something much more than that going on? I remember vividly this period of anticipation and waiting as a child because it was excruciating. I would, I could, I would say that the reason I remember it so well is because it was, it could almost be borderline as a traumatic experience. You know, first of December would hit, and you'd, you'd be both um, excited and, and frustrated because now. The month of Christmas has finally come, but there's still 24 days to go. Yeah, and of course there was there was uh, school and there was end of year parties and caroling and all of that kind of stuff, but it almost seemed like every day was getting slower and slower and slower. Until finally Christmas Eve was here and a day that should be exciting was probably the worst one of all because this was the slowest day. And you're being, and I would try my best to distract myself, to, to help the day go faster. But there were constant reminders all around us. I mean, we were, we'd had, we'd have Christmas music or Christmas movies going on. We'd have to get our Santa stockings out. We would have to get the plate ready with the Tim Tams and the ginger beer for Santa. And then we get sent to bed ridiculously early, like five o'clock at night, because of course Santa won't come if you're awake. And it's, it's, I suppose, a logical assumption that if you go to bed early, you'll go to sleep early. Not the case. I'd go to bed at 5, at 10 o'clock, I'd still be wide-eyed because my mind was just racing. There was just too much going on. But then somehow, eventually, I'd fall asleep, only to be woken up what seemed like minutes later by a little boy shaking my body, saying that Christmas is here. My brother and my sister and I would, would you know, jump out of bed, we'd run to mum and dad's room, and tell them, you know, it's Christmas, it's Christmas. And they'd be to be told, it's four o'clock, we won't be getting up until six o'clock. So the waiting continues and, and the worst part is, it was kind of like Christmas was here, but it also wasn't here. And it was made so much worse by the fact that we were now literally watching time pass us by. We were sitting at the, at the end of mum and dad's bed, literally watching the clock on the VCR 
for two hours until it hit six o'clock. It, it was just a, a, an intense period of very impatient waiting. This parable of, of the fig tree, it, it's all about waiting, but nowhere in this story does it have a release date. All this story kind of tells us is stay tuned, check the listings, something big is coming. And scripture kind of shares this sense of urgency because it, it talks about the fact that this thing that we're waiting for, it, it's, it's kind of already here. It's here and now. There's no time for, for patience or complacency. This is a time of impatient waiting. The, the Christmas story, this all too familiar movie, it, it, it fills our hearts with joy and, and brings back memories. But sometimes we know this story so well that we become complacent. We know how this story goes beginning to end. We know that Jesus was born to Mary and Joseph in a manger, that he was visited by the shepherds, that he was visited by the wise men. We know that he grew up and he rattled the, the institutionalized religious systems because of the way that he loved, because of the way that he healed the, the blind, the sick, the, the deaf, the mute, the lame, the way that that he, he reached out to those with leprosy, the way that he loved those who the rest of society despised. And because of that, he was arrested, convicted, tortured, and eventually executed. But we are so thankful that he was resurrected, that he came back to life, and that through that we can also have new life. We know the story we buy and wrap the presents. We go to the end of year parties. We might even go to the Christmas Day service. And then the whole thing happens again next year. This special time of Advent for us is not just a time for us to, to sit around and wait for the birth of a baby. It's a time for us to consider what is our relationship with the Christ child? What is our relationship with Jesus. With all of the, the, the trappings and the practices that come with the Christmas season, how do we use them to be a witness to friends and family, to be a witness to those who don't truly understand the implications of the Christmas season? Just like we have this sense of, of longing for the Messiah to come, Christ has a longing for us to fall into his arms, to accept his love and forgiveness. He longs for us to be alert and to follow him. But I think this year, possibly more than any other year before, our minds are probably elsewhere. We're constantly bombarded with messages of, of war and national tension of global pandemic and disease, of political unrest, of people losing jobs, people are losing lives. And it's, it's kind of, there's a part of us that kind of wants to bury our heads in the sand until 2020 has passed us by. We've lost that sense of hope. This season of Advent is not a time for us just to sit around and wait patiently for Christmas day to come. We wait impatiently. Like we wait for those movies, counting down the days to a new release. We count down the days to when Jesus, the personification of hope for the world, is born. This Advent season could be amazing for all of us if we stay alert. Imagine if we came into this Advent season as if we'd never heard this story before. I mean, that's every Christmas, that's the prayer that I pray for myself. It's the prayer that I pray for you. That you would experience this familiar story with almost fresh eyes. That you could hear the story as if you've never heard it before. As if you've never seen the movie. 
How would this story impact us differently if we didn't just breeze past the, past the script that we know so well? That if we actually listened, actually listened to the story that we're going to hear about over the next coming weeks and pretend as if we've never heard it before. What parts of the story are really going to stick out to us? Who are the characters that we affiliate with or that we can see ourselves in? What would it look like for us to be alert during this Christmas season, to not miss the beauty, to not miss the miracles, to not miss the calling of Christ? What would this Advent season look like if, if we were already out in the fields with the shepherds, ready to receive the message from the angels? What if we were already with the wise men, looking up at the sky, studying the stars, waiting for that thing that we've been longing for for our whole lives? Stay tuned. Be alert. God is going to do something amazing during this Christmas season. Something big is coming. So stay tuned. My prayer for myself and my prayer for you is that you would experience this Christmas story, this, this familiar story, this favourite movie of ours, that you would experience it as if for the first time this year. My encouragement to you would be to press into the Holy Spirit. We believe that the Holy Spirit lives in the heart of every believer and that the Holy Spirit is a spirit of revelation who wants to reveal to us himself. And so be in prayer. Ask that the Holy Spirit would reveal to you the, the parts or the message of the Christmas story that you need to hear this year. That he would reveal to you the Christmas story fresh and new. There are other things you can do. You could uh, listen to some Christian Christmas music, perhaps music that you've never listened to before. You could just have it going on while you're you know, doing things around the house. For those of you who are, who are visual people, who are visual learners, um, you could watch the Nativity movie. It came out a couple of years ago. We have it on DVD if you want to watch it. It's a great movie. Um, but it might help that um, as we as a church approach the Christmas story and read it in our daily devotions, for you to just have that visual image, it might help you to, to soak it in in a different way. One other thing that I've found very helpful uh, during the Christmas season is to read the Christmas story in an unfamiliar translation of the Bible. Um, maybe something like, uh, like the voice or the passion version would be a good idea. Something that's very different to what you've done before. All of those can be found online very easily. All you need to do is just um, is just Google it and you'll be able to find it. But I think the most important thing is to press into the Spirit. We, we long for the Messiah and the Messiah longs for us. So push into the Spirit and ask that He will reveal to you what Christmas is all about and help you to experience it as if it for the first time. God bless you. We'll see you next week.